And good morning. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It's Thursday, and March the or April the 30th. Boy, I just I get my months mixed up. Brittany Pacheco is joining me at home. Brittany, does it even matter what day of the week it is, or or you know, it seems like we've been in March and April for years now. Finally, you finally got with the program, Todd. Yes, this whole year has taken forever just to get to the end of April. Yes, today is Thursday, April 30th. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Up to the Minute this Thursday morning. If you're watching on Facebook, please be sure to follow us on our Facebook page and then head over to our YouTube channel. You can just search Houston Community College, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you can be one of the first to find out the latest from HCC. Finally, we are at the end of April. Tomorrow's May 1st, and uh, we, we're moving on with the semester. We're almost through it. Glad to have you with us. We've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour or so. We've got some special guests joining, Brittany and myself. Uh, right now, Park Ranger Lisa Jean Reznicek outdoor education specialist with Houston area, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Welcome to the show. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Welcome. It's doing very well. It's a beautiful day. We're going to talk more with you in a second, but we're going to start right now with Dr. Melissa Gonzalez, the president of the HCC Southeast College. Dr. Gonzalez, welcome to the show, and thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, Melissa Gonzalez, Todd. Thank you so much, Brittany. And Lisa, what a great uh, co-guest. Uh, so thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Well, we're glad to have you here. And I wanted to bring you on to talk about some things that are going on at HCC Southeast. And we, you know, we're all working remotely right now. And this was a huge undertaking for our faculty. I know uh, they, they really spent a lot of hours getting ready to go live a few weeks ago. Uh, what was the largest undertaking and the biggest challenge for you getting your faculty and staff ready to go online with uh, class delivery, instruction delivery? Yes, what a great question. Well, we uh, are home of the uh, Center of Excellence for Business and Logistics and also for our uh, welding and associated technology. So we had the biggest uh, Center of Excellence, which is business and uh, we have uh, uh, 53 full-time and about 120 adjuncts. So getting all of them prepared to go fully online was a, a challenge. But you know what? All the resources, all the support was given, and they were able to do that with flying colors. We're having a lot of success. And then on the other side with welding, it's a smaller program, but a lot of the faculty there were not used to using technology to teach their classes. Of course, it's a welding class. But believe it or not, we have some modules, some classes that um, some were, uh, most um, of the studies were able to be placed online. Of course, we're going to have to have them come back in as soon as we're able to, so they can finish the, uh, and complete the courses successfully as far as the students are concerned. But everybody working together, all the support that was given to the faculty. And um, so we're, we're so excited that everybody is doing well and faculty have really done what they had to do to make sure that we are uh, completely and remotely online. I'm glad you brought up the welding classes because that's been a big question in our social media. How do you, how do you teach welding or classes that have to be hands-on? Um, how do you, that's gotta be a huge challenge to try to teach this, but from what you're saying, at least uh, they can do the lecturing portion and maybe some demonstrations online while the students are working remotely. Yeah, so we're teaching a lot of safety, a lot of, of, of videos are being shown to show some type of the t different types of wells and different type of procedures. But yes, at the end of the day, we do need to bring the students back on the campus and that's the promise. I mean, we do plan to do that following all the CDC guidelines and, and when it, it is the right time to do that. At this point, it's not, but we will, we're preparing to do that. Out of all this, we were able to get online a few weeks ago. What's been the most rewarding for thing for you, um, seeing that it, we were successful in launching the programs online? Um, you know, I think, I believe it's just the support that everybody's been giving each other. It's not just Southeast and Northeast and Southwest. I mean, we're all working together. The deans are working together. The presidents are working together. We're working together with district. 
to make sure we have all the support, what's working with at one campus with, you know, through some of the care calls, you know, maybe we need to share that information. And we do, we share that, hey, this is what's coming up. And so we try to address it as a team, as a system. So I think, I believe that this has really caused us to come together and work together to be smarter and more effective to help our students. And that sentiment you just said seems to have echoed across the nation because it seems like we're all working together, um, even though we're not uh, uh, in person, but we're seeing people face to face and, and checking in and we're having to work together as a nation because I'm sure you've known it seemed like we were very divided over the last few years. Yes, yes. And so sometimes we were doing some things and, you know, they're going well. And but now we're sharing, you know, especially some of the concerns that students are bringing up. We share that with everybody to make sure that we're capturing because right now it's so important that students feel that they have the support uh, needed so that they can be successful, so they can continue coming to HEC and also continue to taking classes with us. What's been your impression so far over the first few weeks of online instruction? You know, it's been really rewarding and satisfying to hear that students are adjusting. In despite of the other challenges that students may have, for instance, you know, childcare issues, space issues, technology issues, but you know what, we're addressing those things. Um, we share information with our students about food drives. We share information about how to get technology and how to get internet. And, you know, we're working with the government as far as the CARES Act to provide funding um, through the federal government, also through our foundation. So we're, you know, we're filling in the gaps and helping students you know, be successful through, in these, through these challenging times. What's the feedback you've heard from your students and your faculty and staff? Yes, so we're very excited that at, at Southeast and uh, as well as all the other campuses we have, we call it the Southeast Call Center and we're calling students. We're calling students all the time and they are very, um, you know, very grateful for uh, us calling and for us sharing information. And more importantly, a lot of the students want to talk and we have um, also helped them, you know, connect them with a counselor or connect them, connect them with other resources. Faculty also, they're being more um, active and more engaged with the students and not that they weren't before, but this is a different, you know, environment. And so everybody's, you know, coming, you know, to the table and we really want this to be a, a great experience for all of us. So I hadn't heard that before. So you guys are actually calling to the students, making phone calls and, and speaking to them just to check on their welfare. Yes, yes, just on the welfare, uh, especially students who had never been on online classes before, students uh, that um, you know, had not been to the campus before. So we, you know, we really wanna share all the resources that we have and they share with us some of the challenges and we try to, again, fill those gaps. Dr. Gonzalez, do you have a message for your students for the Southeast College that you'd like to get out to them? Yes, uh, we are so excited. We, our student life, believe it or not, have bingo night, they have disco night, they have events that they have. So please, you know, if you're a Southeast student, please get involved with our, uh, through our social media. We have all these you know, uh, activities for students. We are here to help you. We are here to help you be successful in whatever you want to do. So again, um, you can always reach us out here uh, through our, all our social media channels and through our regular HEC website. So again, Southeast is here to help. And you know, just thank God for the opportunity to be here and, and just to get closer to uh, each other. We're going through this together and let's just be, have fun doing it. I'm glad you brought up student life because really across the college, those guys have been doing an incredible job. Yes. Live streams, or as you mentioned, bingo, dance yes. night, they've got yes. all types of things. Just because we're not in the buildings doesn't mean they're not doing the activities because they really are getting after it. Yes, yes, we are. Dr. Melissa Gonzalez, the president of HCC Southeast College, thanks for being here today. Have a great day and thanks for joining us. You're welcome anytime. We'd love to see you again. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank and you. now we're going to move on to our visit with Park Ranger Lisa Jean Reznicek. And uh, welcome to the show once again. Now we're into our second month at home with a lot of parents home with their kids going, what do we do next? But you guys have some outdoor programs that you can take in indoors to give uh, folks an experience at, at least. Tell us about those. Yeah, thanks, Todd. Um, we know that a lot of people 
derive a lot of happiness and health and uh, generally a lot of education just by going outdoors, which we are limited in doing right now. So instead of camping out with our visitors, we're trying to host a camp in and we're providing outdoor skills and education uh, for families around the Houston, uh, but also around the entire nation through our Facebook page, all leading up to our May 2nd camp in event. So that's coming up this weekend, and it's a camp-in event. Tell us where people can go to find it, what it's about, and what they can expect. Awesome. Yeah, we, we're inviting everybody to come and camp in with us um, through Facebook. So we're using Facebook Live, and we're hosting a series of events where you can go back and always pick up those skills that you need, but also join us this Saturday for the May 2nd event. Um, those are going to be on the Texas Outdoor Family Facebook page, but also we're working in conjunction with the Buffalo Soldiers Program. So you can go to the Texas Buffalo Soldiers Program Facebook page as well. That's a great program. I know we've done stuff with them uh, here at HCC. And, uh, you know, I've got to say, it's, it's really encouraging. I go to the park every day. I did before the, the shutdown to um, at least Memorial Park or Buffalo Bayou. But you're seeing more people out in the park. Um, you know, at times it's a little bit crowded, but folks are social distancing. But you're seeing a lot more families than I've ever seen before. And that's, I imagine as an outdoor enthusiast, and that, that's, your, that's your profession, it's got to be encouraging, even in these troubling times to see that um, reinvigoration to get outdoors. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that our connection with nature is more important now than ever. Um, so any way that we can get outdoors in a safe and responsible way, that's what we want to encourage. But we're also trying to provide those skills for an indoor setting as well. And you guys have been doing those for a while. Have you seen um, a lot of increased traffic uh, joining you for these live events that you've been having? Because y'all been doing these around since uh, beginning of April, right? Yeah, we, uh, we shifted very quickly. Uh, once we knew that we couldn't provide borrowed gear or go out to the state park safely, we shifted everything virtually starting the beginning of April. Um, and we're going to continue these virtual events uh, through May with uh, another big event at the end of May. Um, but yeah, we've seen a big increase uh, just as people start to recognize and uh, want to get some of these outdoor skills that they can't get in other ways. I know uh, uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott um, recently opened the, reopened the parks again, which is great for you, but there are some guidelines that you're asking folks to follow to stay safe in the park. Could you mention a few of those? Well, the most up-to-date information is going to be found on Texas Parks and Wildlife website, and you're right, we're using those guidelines set by both the state but also by the CDC or Center for Disease Control. So these national and state standards we're trying to implement in our state parks. So the most up-to-date information is probably gonna be online. What we can say is that we are encouraging social distancing and we are also encouraging people to just stay safe and to follow those general guidelines. You know, here's a question from left field, but maybe you can clarify if this is true or not, but we're seeing all these pictures on Facebook and social media of animals that are going out to public places because there's no one there. Is that really happening or are these just weird occurrences? Because you're seeing it across the world, maybe a deer, you know, walking across a park in an area where it's never ventured before because there's usually people there eating in that park area or having lunch or picnics. Is that really happening? Have you noticed that? Yeah, we've, we've seen a lot of that in our state parks as we have less people indoors. Nature is adapting just as quickly as we are. And so that critical habitat that is often established inside a state park with awesome uh, greenery and water access and plenty of space, they're trying to take that back over. So it is really exciting to see nature bounce back as yeah. I hope that we can. Did you think it would happen this quickly? I mean, we've been shut down for about a month and a half now, and you're, you're seeing a lot of this, or at least I'm seeing new pictures of it every day in social media. When I go to Buffalo Bayou Park, there's a lot less people, but I'm seeing more rabbits going across the trail than I've ever done. Yeah, and it could be that they were already there, and just because you walk past, you may not have noticed them there. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty interesting how quickly things are shifting and changing, both for us, but also for nature. 
Now, once again, um, where can people go to visit to get more information about their local parks and any other online resources? Um, where would you suggest they go? I, I definitely suggest going to the Central Texas Parks and Wildlife webpage. Um, they sort of set the standard for both my program, the Texas Outdoor Family Program, Buffalo Soldiers, but also uh, those boots on the ground out there in the state parks, the folks that you may interact with the most, they're gonna be going to the Texas Parks and Wildlife website for the most up-to-date recommendations. And I know, uh, you know, during this time of crisis, uh, all nonprofits really can suffer at a time, but when folks want to support Texas Parks and Wildlife, how can they do so during this crisis? Because you know, all nonprofits are really needing the help at this time. Yeah, I think that as a state agency, we are in a blessed position and we have a lot of resources, but there are places that you can go uh, to donate um, and support the work that we do. And that's the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. Um, they're an overarching uh, nonprofit that's associated with your Texas state parks. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, and once again, we've been talking with uh, Lisa Jean Rezacek, and she is a park ranger. Thanks for being here and telling us about all the great things that are being done by Texas Parks and Wildlife. We appreciate you being here. Beautiful. Thanks. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you. So, Brittany, um, I know you had some uh, wildlife interesting things going on at your house, at least with the outdoor noises happening during the show. Um, have they finished the lawn work outside? Not just quite, uh, you know, they're, they're progressively moving further away from my building, but you know, it is what it is. But I have seen a little bit more wildlife around the apartments uh, recently. Uh, there was an armadillo, we've seen some rabbits. Yeah. Uh, I know that one of my neighbor's dogs actually woke up a snake and yeah. thankfully nothing happened. The snake didn't bite the dog. The dog didn't bite the snake. The human didn't bite the snake. You know, it's okay. Every, everything's okay. So, uh, yeah, definitely nature is taking back what is originally theirs. And rightfully so. <laughs> I love the way she put that because when you think about it, it's just uh, the way things work out. You know, nature's reclaiming the open spaces. And it happened pretty darn quickly. You see these pictures the most one that stands out the most to me, there was one of a buffalo on a beach. Uh -huh. I think it was, uh, I can't remember exactly where it was, but they were venturing down because there's usually people on the beaches. But there was also one of a jellyfish swimming around Venice because the waters have cleared up a bit. And they showed some of the waters around um, uh, in San Antonio, the Riverwalk, and those waters are clearing up. So what's going on here? It's, it's me, it's just fascinating to see that happen. Well, Todd, the uh, San Antonio River Walk has cleared up so much that the dolphins have returned to it. Did you that's see that? Incredible. That is incredible. I know. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, I know we're all going to return to work one day and, and we're all going to be outside again. But it's at least during these times, it's comforting, at least to me, and fascinating to see that happen. It really is. And it actually reminds me when I was taking art appreciation at HCC, I can't remember the artist's name uh, right off the top of my head, but he had a series of paintings that showed the evolution from when man uh, inhabited the earth to when nature would reclaim yeah. the earth. And it's, it's just kind of interesting to see that kind of happen right now in this, in this unusual new normal that we're living in right now. So, but that is the life that we are currently living, but we are going to get through this slowly. The state is opening back up. Yeah. However, I am, I'm, I'm kind of glad some businesses are taking it upon themselves to not open just, right. just quite yet. Um, well, I'm going I'm to ask you a question because I'll give you my answer in a second. This weekend, are you and your husband going to be venturing out, maybe trying to get out a bite to eat or anything like that? Actually, no. Uh, we've been doing really well staying indoors. Uh, we have been supporting the local small businesses around yeah. here for food and whatnot. Uh, however, my neighbors and I are talking about getting together either tomorrow night or Saturday just to um, kind of come together and social distance, but still yeah. have you know dinner together, that kind of thing things so but we are talking about going out tomorrow to a, a, a preservation walk yeah. you know trail nearby just to get out and walk and um you know just just to get outdoors 
Well, we're going to head to the mall. I'm going to give it a try. The week before the shutdown, we went to the mall and we loved it because there was hardly anyone there. Social distancing, no problem whatsoever. About half the stores were closed and they were closing literally while we were there, shutting, shutting doors. So uh, we're gonna head to the mall just to get out and, and do something differently, maybe get a bite to eat. We were gonna look into going to a theater, but you, even though they're opening them up, you can't find any that are gonna be open this weekend. Yeah, that's true. And you're kind of restricted to, you know, the theater wants you to practice social distancing, but the attendees yeah. don't want to. It's yeah. It's just that hard call to make, but you know, again, we'll get back to our our actual normal soon. Uh, but in the meantime, we've got some things to talk about that's happening at HCC. The first thing I do want to share with everyone is that the uh, Northwest, if I'm not mistaken, Student uh, Government Association is hosting a very important discussion with our very own Joellen Saucier uh, about HCC emergency aid question and answer session. So if you guys are interested in participating and hearing what we have to offer in terms of emergency aid, because we do have various um, programs available for students during this time, I would highly encourage everyone to uh, take part in this uh, discussion that's happening today from 2 p.m. to 3. And you can go to our Facebook page to get the link. There's a graphic there that you all can uh, get all the information from and learn about HCC's emergency aid for financial aid and non-financial aid students. You were talking about the new normal that we're living in. Part of that are online classes. We're doing that now and we'll be doing it at least through the summer. And summer registration is now underway. You can register for the summer at hccs.edu slash now. And we also have a fall registration that'll take in, be taking place uh, pretty soon, Brittany. Exactly. Fall 2020 registration begins Monday, May 4th. It's just right around the corner. And if you all are interested in registering for fall 2020, and at this time, we cannot tell you if it's going to be face-to-face -face or 100% online, but just bear with us. You know, uh, we're taking those uh, baby steps, crossing those bridges when we get there, making sure we're following not only city officials, but state and federal uh, officials and their guidelines. So, but that shouldn't debtor your wanting to enroll for your education. So again, fall 2020 registration begins Monday, May the 4th, and you can go to hccs.edu slash now for more information. We also have a graduation coming up May, May the 22nd, which is just a few weeks away. Uh, you can visit that at hccs.edu slash graduation. Uh, we've got a virtual graduation that'll be taking place. Whole new thing for us. So um, it's going to be very interesting. I'm going to tell you it's a lot of work's going into it. A lot of behind the scenes work, but we're looking at putting on a uh, first class presentation for everyone. If you can't graduate in person, we're going to offer you that virtual uh, experience on May the 22nd and we've got another option for folks wanting to walk in graduation. Definitely because we understand that this is such a milestone for so many people who either just got uh, went to school straight out of high school or came back to start a new career. It doesn't matter. We understand that this is such an important moment in your life and we obviously want you to have that experience of walking across the stage. So students, if you all are really wanting to cross that stage, you are invited to participate in the fall 2020 commencement ceremonies that will cross fingers take place as scheduled in person. That way you can have that experience, put on your regalia, decorate your cap, invite your friends and family, everyone who supported you during your time at HCC. And we are here to support you 100% for that moment. That's right, hccs.edu slash graduation is the website there. And for all the information for students, faculty, and staff, there is a website they can visit. Actually, there's a couple of them. Maybe you can go over those real quick. Definitely, so for the latest on what's happening at HCC during the COVID-19 crisis, you can go to hccs.edu slash health dash notice. You'll see a list of all the announcements that the college officials have made since all of this uh, went into effect back in March. 
the latest information about the grading policy that has temporarily changed is also on that site. So become very familiar about what is going to be offered to students, pass fail options, withdrawals, incompletes, you have whatever it is. If you have questions about it, you can go again to hccs.edu slash health dash notice. And for students who need resources, about financial aid, advising, counseling, testing, all of the above, you name it, uh, you can go to hccs.edu slash COVID-19 students. All of our departments have had to change some procedures and policies, and we want you to have the latest information at, right at your fingertips. So be sure you become familiar with those two websites. I'll say it again, hccs.edu slash health dash notice on the latest announcements from the college and hccs.edu slash COVID-19 students for all of the student resources. And if you can't find what you need there, you can always visit our virtual lobby on our homepage. And that's at the uh, hccs.edu homepage. Scroll to the bottom. You'll see something that says virtual assistance. Click on that. That'll bring you up to a, a screen where you can enter all your information and a specific question that you need answered. Because a lot of times, Brittany, when you post something in social media, it may be too um, uh, sensitive or something that doesn't need to be broadcast to the public or you just want a private answer, you can go to this uh, virtual assistance tab on the homepage and that'll uh, you'll avoid having the rest of the world see it in social media. Definitely. And we do encourage all students and anyone who has questions about HCC to definitely direct message us on all of our social media platforms. If you're not going to hear from me, you're going to hear from one of our team members from the social media group uh, to better answer your questions. And we might not have the answers right there available. So yes, the virtual lobby form is a great way for you to get an answer about a very case specific question. But we will do our best to put you in touch with the right individual at HCC to better assist you. So before we go, I want to mention, have you seen, um, you know, Frank Cooper works for our social media team. Have you seen his new video he just posted? I, tell you, I love working with Frank. He, George, Justin, and Nathan, you know, who's yeah. behind the scenes right now on this show, you know, we all get together and, and kind of shoot the breeze sometimes on yeah. different video yeah. ideas. And sometimes those ideas come to life. And so this video that you're talking about with Frank about, his letter to the NBA is yeah. just, it's just great. It, it speaks volumes to who Frank is and just his character. And yeah, it's, it's so good. <laughs> so if you haven't seen it, go to our Facebook page or our YouTube channel and watch the video. It's hilarious. And I told Frank to send it to ESPN because it's that good. I could see them plan it, at least in their social media. Um, it's a great video. And, and when you watch it, you're thinking he really misses the NBA right now. I think I think everyone out there misses sports in general. Yeah. I mean, Nathan shared with us a, a video about some marble racing. Marbles. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm getting tired of watching games from 10, 15, even three years ago. We want some live sports, but you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, hopefully soon. Um, tomorrow on the show, Brittany, we've got some special guests joining us. Michael Garfield back again. He's got some tips that he's going to be bringing us. And we've also got a sneak peek at this weekend scenes on screens. You know, we're going to do a live stream this weekend involving the drama department. They're going to be doing a reading of a play. So we'll talk about that more tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk about how they're raising funds for HCC's foundations uh, the HCC Foundation's Emergency Fund for Students. So we'll talk about that, all that tomorrow. Brittany, thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, Todd, thanks again. And thank you everyone for watching us on Facebook Live. Again, be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on all of our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And also head over to YouTube and search Houston Community College to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and again, you'll be one of the first to find out the latest from HCC. Have a great day, folks. Thanks for being here. We will see you live tomorrow at 10 a.m. on Facebook. I'm Todd Duplantis, and you're up to the minute.